Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we're talking about mental illness in the Bible, mental illness in the Bible. And this particular audio pretty much goes along with all the other ones in the leadership series. You got a breakdown of various personality disorders, bipolar disorder, paranoia. Uh, You also received other audio in the past dealing with those issues related to family, friends, co-workers, and what we share on YouTube in Enterprise 7 are messages to break all sorts of emotional as well as physical bondage, okay? Now, some things are untouchable, and that is because God is responsible. No amount of prayer, no amount of us. Uh, psychological treatments, medicine, you name it, is going to rid some people of their issues, okay? We can look at it as unfair all we want. I don't serve a God that's like that. That's fine, but God is responsible for some of the things that people go through, and at times it's as a result of the consequences of sin. They were already in sin, They continue to disobey the Lord. They continue to do things to hurt other people. And now they're suffering. Others, it was the parents. It was the grandparents. It was generations of all sorts of issues within a family. And now they fall upon us. And we get some relief as we draw near to the Lord. But to rid us of everything No, that doesn't happen. We live in a sinful world. And as long as uh, Jesus has yet to come back, we're going to continue to deal with any number of issues. Okay. so now that I got that out the way, I want for some of you all to pay close attention to the various scriptures that we're going to get into. And I'm also going to pull from different websites as well so that you can go back and do further study on mental illness in the Bible because some of you all are leading people and you want to make sure that you are leading them in the way that God wants you to and not in the way you feel. Okay, we hear that a lot uh, with some folks. I feel that this is what we should do. I think, no, I want to be right on point. Okay. (laughs) So you don't want to label somebody something that they're really not. You don't want to end up, um, saying that, uh, your information is better than the information that God himself is moving upon some of his people to put into play. We are to humble ourselves. Okay. And look for the truth. The truth in all things, whether it sounds biblical or not, we've got to look for the truth as God wills for us to. Okay, some people are going mad in their own minds because they are trying to force a a peg into a round hole. Okay, and I'm talking about a square peg (laughs) into a round hole. And when they do that sort of thing, they end up uh, coming up with some misdiagnosis. They uh, find themselves in a lot of hot water. If only they would have just consulted with the one true God and spent enough time in him and they could be able to get the answers that they need. So this message is going to hit home with some psychologists, uh, ministers, uh, teachers, uh, organizers of special events and so forth, because you've got to always keep in mind that. Not everybody who stands before you has it together, no matter how nice they look, what car they drive, um, or how intelligent they speak. And some people are easily deceived because they're thinking crazy is supposed to look like this, that, or the other, or uh, disabilities of all sorts are supposed to be just like what this book says. But I will tell you that. Whatever that book might be, whether it's the Bible or um, a man-made book, hmm, God has a way of shocking you. And you find out some things that after years and years of study will blow your mind. So 
Let's talk about mental illness in the Bible since we talked about mental illness and people in the previous audios and so forth. And I gave you some scriptures on how to deal with some of those things as well as what to look out for. And so now we're going to get into some examples of how God uh, has uh, done all sorts of things, okay, to cause man to go as well as woman to go mad. To cause them to become delusional, uh, even down to giving them some uh, physical ailments that only he could uplift off of them. Let's go over to Deuteronomy 28, 27 through 29. The Lord will smite you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors and with the scab. And with the itch from which you cannot be healed. And just so you know, I'm reading um, from the Bible Hub. It's a cross reference. And it is uh, the NIV. So the Lord is smiting uh, with boils in this particular scripture. Okay. And anybody who has had any type of skin condition, you know that it can drive you crazy, right? All that itching and so forth. Well, he, he had put something upon the folks that couldn't be healed. Reading on. The Lord will smite you with madness and with blindness and with bewilderment of heart. Notice that bewilderment of heart. And you will grope at noon as the blind man gropes in darkness and you will not prosper in your ways, but you shall only be oppressed and robbed continually with none to save you. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Now, if one receives some type of information, whether from a family member, a friend, or even God himself sharing this type of information with the person, you know they're not going to come out and tell you anything like this. Oh, well, God, he's the one who caused all these problems and all that. Now, some people may in their madness tell you, oh, I'm like this because God, God put this upon me. And for some people, they'll scratch their heads and they'll even tear up a bit. What do you mean, God? God wouldn't do this to you. Hmm. That's the problem right there. People assume what God won't do. They put God in a box. Okay. God was threatening the Israelites and he was threatening them. And not only that, he was striking them with all sorts of things to cause their minds to go mad. Okay. Why? Because they sinned against them. So this would explain why some folks, they are on that slow climb up, right? And they're talking all of this positive stuff and they're inspirational and they're mo and they're uh, motivating people to change their lives and they're doing so much good. But then they decline. They they decline. And some people don't understand. Is it because they were studying too much? Was it because of uh, um, something they ate? They drank. Is it because of some people they were around? I mean, this madness can come on people all of a sudden. What goes up comes down. And sometimes there is no medical explanation as to why people go through. All we know, according to the scriptures, is that God will smite some folks that sin against him. Now, if sin isn't a big part of your life, you're not interested in doing any research on sin. Um, you don't have a faith. then of course, you're going to overlook that and you're going to come up with all sorts of labels in a book. But I challenge some folks to take a good long look at sin. OK, because sin is the root cause of why a lot of people go through like they do. I can speak on this because when the Lord spoke to me directly, directly, we're talking about in my spirit. And share with me why I was going through panic anxiety attacks. Trust me, it didn't sound like anything a psychologist would ever tell me. Okay. Or even a preacher for that matter. Because there's a lot of preachers that don't even get into this sort of thing. God putting a, a curse upon folks. God striking them with illnesses. God uh, causing people to go mad. Mm -mm. But I will tell you from firsthand knowledge that. It was because at that particular time in my life, the Lord was calling me to 
marriage and I was saying no. Okay. Instead, I wanted to just go about having this, this relationship with him, but not doing what he wanted me to do. And there, there were other things. I'm just giving you a small example, but there were other things that he wanted me to do. And I wrestled with the Lord in the spiritual realm. And so as a result of doing that, I caused my own downfall at that particular time in my life because I knew better. And the Lord said, you know, you know, no excuses. You've been walking with me since 1997. And at that time when I was going through much, um, I had first uh, been talked to in the spiritual realm, as well as the Lord using his messengers to speak to me in 2005. Then um, once again, rebelling, doing what I wanted to do in 2006, 2007. By the time 2009 rolled around, I was on a plane back in my mother's house, in my father's house. Okay. All right. And I was, it was just the early signs of that was the postpartum uh, depression after I had the babies, which could have been prevented had I listened to the Lord about just getting out more and just um, um, reaching out for some help during tough times and all of that. No. Okay. Small pieces of advice, the types of uh, information that a doctor would tell you. But no, okay, it was bad enough. I was already going through some sinful things and then to turn around and not even listen to basic information. Okay, so 2009 back with the parents and so forth. So now your business is really out in the street because you're going back. It's going backward. Anytime you go back to a parent's house, you feel like you're going backward instead of forward. Then the command was given to me to change some things in my life. 2011 rolled around. Okay, here we go. Panic anxiety attacks. Okay. Walking around without a cover. So therefore those who were cursing the relationship that I was in, those who had issue with myself as well as my partner. And, and on top of that, um, people who were just judgmental. The fact that you even had babies out of wedlock. Walking around without a covering, a spiritual covering, and left myself exposed as well as my family exposed. You don't want to listen to the Lord. You don't want to do what's right. I'm telling you that you've got to make some changes. I didn't want to make any changes. The consequences to sin is suffering, much suffering, especially for those of us who have been walking with the Lord for quite some time and should know better. So I'm putting it out there. You got to hear me talk about everybody else's issues. I'm talking about an issue that there was no label that people could sit back and guess. People could come up with all sorts of, well, maybe it was because of this that, and the other. I personally knew what it was all about. And that's why I'm telling some folks that if God's been speaking to you about something and you know that is not right, you know, it doesn't correlate with scriptures. Come on. You've been justifying your sin and your sinful lifestyle. If you want some of these plagues to go away, some of this drama, I'm saying some, but maybe for some people, they might get all of it taken away. I don't know. Then do what it is that God tells you to do. Otherwise, you're going to continue to walk in darkness and you can ask Facebook and everybody else for prayer all you want. But if you don't confess your sin and repent and change your mindset about the sin, you will continue to go through. You may have a little bit of relief, but I trust you me, it will come back stronger. The consequences of sin will come back stronger, whatever your it is. It could be depression. It could be panic, anxiety. It could be heart attacks. Oh, it could be uh, some uh, things that you thought you got over years ago. And now here they come back again. Tumors, ulcers, blood clots. I'm seeing in the spirit um, demonic uh, spirits that follow folks around that make them feel scared all the time. Um, what else? Come on now. Some of you all just shout it out in Jesus name, right where you are. Okay. As long as it's not disturbing other people around you and you, if you don't get those things, um, off your chest, how are you going to be able to help other people? 
Some people, they got a bad track record lately of helping folks. The feedback has been poor. Why? Because you got stuff going on with you. So <laughs> the Lord, he showed me a scripture. Um, what was it? Uh, I think it was yesterday talking about taking um, the uh, stick out of your own eye or the two by four actually out of your own eye before you try to remove a stick out of somebody else's eye, just summarizing the scripture. I'm sure you can find out, find it. Okay. Oh, matter, matter of fact, Matthew seven. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew seven, <laughs> uh, one through 29 judge, not that you be not judged leader. Okay. I added the leader part in there. Um, this is taken out of the ESV version of the Bible for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. Okay, folks, labeling, mm -hmm. judging other folks. Okay, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? Come on now, leader. But do not notice the log that is in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye. Come on, leader. Let me help you, right? Mm. Let me take the speck out of your eye when there is the log in your own eye. This is the Lord speaking, not me. Don't be mad at me. <laughs> you hypocrite first. Okay, hypocrite, pretender. You hypocrite first. Take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And when are you pretending? When you're sitting there and you're listening to the person, and you know full well that that story that they're telling you sounds a lot like what you're currently going through, but yet you're going to help me? Come on. And if somebody shows up in, in an office and they got the gift of discernment, they'll start ministering to you. They'll start telling you some things about you. And then what do you find yourself doing? Oh, um, um, we're not here to talk about you or talk about me. We're here to talk about you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because it starts to uh, hit home and you don't want that person knowing all of what's going on. So you're going to definitely get them out of that conversation. Because you know it's going to uh, expose you, you see. So that makes you a pretender. There's certain subject matter that I, early on, when I first uh, came to YouTube, I could not speak about whatsoever. Every time I acted like I was going to open up my mouth, the Lord shut me down. Okay, he shut me down. Because at that particular point in my life, I was not released to talk about the things that I'm talking about right now. In these um, in these uh, recent audios, okay, because I wasn't there yet. I was still going through. How can I help you when I'm going through? You see, how can I do any type of uh, spiritual um, uplift, encouragement, what have you, if I don't even feel uplifted? So certain subject matter years back, I didn't even get into. Okay, didn't even get into. Okay, but now, oh, I've been released, and I I walk according to the will of the Lord. Okay. So as a leader, when you are released to uh, speak the kinds of truth, that's going to get some people healed. They might cry. They might curse. They may even threaten you, but it's going to get some people healed. Then you do that. But if you're not released, then you keep your mouth shut because um, <laughs> you don't want to be put in that position where God starts uh, using that person who you're supposed to be counseling to tell some truths on you. Okay. They might even do some research and be like, mm -hmm, yeah, okay. How can you talk to me about this, that, and the other? Right. So we go through some fires and sometimes God will orchestrate those fires so that we can be able to um, have that firsthand uh, experience, you know, um, so that we can help uh, other folks. Okay. There's a lot to cover, Jesus. This is going to be a two-part uh, two part message, just so you know. Mental illness in the Bible is going to be two-part. Okay. Um, the other thing that we want to pay close attention to when it comes to mental illness in the Bible is that there are different people who went through so many different things. And we could actually use those folks as examples to share with the people. OK, who feel like they're all alone. Right. Oh, you know, I just got diagnosed with this, that and the other. Uh, OK, um, I will pull out some scriptures. Uh, I will talk about Nebuchadnezzar if that person is open to hearing a story um, about the insanity that took place with Nebuchadnezzar. Um, I would uh, bring up 
some of the um, challenges um, that uh, that uh, Saul went through. Okay, matter of fact, some he went through a lot. Um, you know, so there's there's those examples you can um, pull from. Okay. Uh, if it comes down to accusations where people were falsely accused of being, um, in a, uh, confused state of mind when they really weren't, well, we got Jesus for that example. Okay. Because Jesus, he had all his senses about him. There was no question about it. So, um, that will encourage someone who feels like, uh, there's that one, or two or three that's trying to uh, crazy make, okay? Make that person crazy, whether on the internet or off the internet. Hey, they hated Jesus, they're gonna hate you too. You see, you're preaching truth, you're uh, advising folks, you're helping people out. Um, some people around you may be jealous. Uh, this is why, this is why they may come at you in the way that they um, come. You're going to have to be the, your own cheerleader. If your husband's not going to cheer for you, your daughter, your son, uh, your cousins, your siblings, uh, your parents, okay, you're going to have to take on that role, you see. So we can use uh, some of the trials that people in the Bible have gone through to encourage other folks, okay? And some of you all, you may need that yourselves, okay? Um, now... That word crazy gets thrown around a lot, as I've mentioned in the past. And sometimes I will use it um, to share some information um, with the worldly type. Okay, those that come through and they just <laughs> they're they're just not careful about how they um, explain things um, when it comes to maybe a relative or uh a friend or a coworker or what have you. So they choose to use the description crazy. So sometimes that description works best for some folks. Okay. Please don't take offense to it. Of course, we're supposed to use words like mentally handicapped or disabled. Um, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, going into the Bible, the crazy prophets of the old Testament, <laughs> OK, um, there is actually an article on the Catholic Exchange dot com. OK, um, once again, don't uh, throw me under the bus. OK, because I know some people are not Catholics. I know I'm not. But I thought that this piece was interesting. Um, it's crazy prophets of the Old Testament. It was written by Stephen Bill. Now I'm going to pull some of uh, the information that he put together. Um, from that article because it's important for you to go and do some studying on your own after this message, okay? Um, there were some eccentric folks, okay, that are in the Bible. And yes, nowadays we would say that they were crazy, okay? But we have to understand that just like God is going to put some consequences out there of sinful behaviors, okay, as a result of sinful behaviors that will cause people to lose their minds, okay, he will also use his people who are relatively sane to do some things that look insane. Why? To share a message with whomever is around that person. Well, isn't there so many other ways he could do that? Of course. But once again, we don't put God in a box. You don't put the creator of the universe in a box. You might not agree with the things that he does, but he is getting a message across. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's going to be that Isaiah kind of ministry. And I chuckle because those people who are familiar with Isaiah, they know that Isaiah stripped off all his clothes and wandered around naked. OK, <laughs> now I'm not saying that he's going to call somebody to that type of ministry. I'm just saying that mm, he can. He might. OK, I'm not going to put him in a box. Um, and you can find that in, uh, in the book of Isaiah 20. OK, because I know some people. Oh, what? Uh -uh, I never heard of that. Well, Isaiah 20. OK, he can also 
use, once again, relatively sane folks to do insane things where society would say, oh, he's crazy or she's crazy. Jeremiah is another example in the Bible. Okay. Now, this was one who took his undergarments and um, hid them under a rock and then went back to get them after the undergarments have been there for a long time. And you can check that story out in Jeremiah 13. Okay. Um, and then there's some other references just to see uh, how God used this man, Jeremiah 27 and 28. Now, Hosea, and I've, I've uh, done an audio about Hosea in the past. He was called to, check this out now, listen up. He was called to marry a prostitute. Okay. And then named the daughter, uh, uh, Loruhama, okay, or Loruhama, which means unloved. Okay. Now just imagine, imagine God putting you up to doing some things that the world will look at you and say, that woman or that man's crazy. How about Jonah? I'm sure you're familiar with that, uh, with that story, right? And some people don't want to believe that. I even had somebody tell me to my face, you really believe that a man staying three days in the belly of a whale? Well, there's scientific research and there's been folks who have uh, come across this sort of thing where humans have been found alive in big fish. So, you know, really thank God for the internet. Cause at the time when I was talking to this individual, we were not the big internet users. Internet was still fresh. Okay. But thank God for the internet. So you can look up that if you don't want to believe that. And if you don't want to believe that God is going to use people like, Jonah and Isaiah and Hosea and modern day Jeremiah's and so forth. Well, then um, I just suggest that you draw nearer to the Lord. You'll be surprised at what he will put believers up to doing. Okay. While families will say, oh, you're crazy. Woo. That's, that's not even right. God wouldn't tell you to do that. And I've had people question some things that I've done over the years and they would say things like God wouldn't tell you not to call your grandmother for a year get out of here which he did which he did and I understand why it was to prep me it was to prep me because he knew my heart he knew how long it was going to take me to uh, start to disconnect from her because she was such an integral part of my life and he also knew he planned on taking her too years later. So it, the sting of her death didn't was it, it didn't hurt as much as it could have. It could have sent me into an insanity because that's how much faith I had in her. And there were things about her that I didn't want to believe. And during that year, the Lord showed me the truth about her. Now, if I had been calling her like I had always been calling her then I wouldn't have been able to see the truth that other people were telling me um, uh, about her. Okay. Sometimes what people think is insane really is sane. And then you sit down and talk with some professionals and then you find out, oh, wow, that would make total sense why God would have me do that. Okay. So I praise God and I thank God for the times where he used me to do things and continue even now to use me to do some things that other people would say, oh, well, that's because she's going through a tough time and uh, she's got some weird things going on with her. And of course, they're going to put those labels because they can't understand the mind of God. If I'm not walking with God, I'm not reading his word to understand, not just reading it, but to understand the mind of God, then all the stuff that God does using his believers is going to seem bizarre because it doesn't look like what everybody else would typically do. It doesn't look like or fit into the status quo. And so when it doesn't look like whatever believes it should look like, well, then we have these problems. Okay. With not with us, but with those around us who don't understand. Okay. I hope I made it clear. Um, Ezekiel was another one in the Bible. Okay. That they said was, Ooh, 
Okay, a bit off. But it turns out that uh, with his particular ministry, um, he he was uh, just doing all sorts of things to help the folks to get them to see what God was doing. It was a prophetic ministry. Okay. And sometimes people don't understand that the prophetic ministry, uh, it's visual at times. It, it's a indicator of what is ahead. Um, Ezekiel was prophesying. He was, uh, using, um, barley cl- uh, cakes. Okay. And he was cooking them over cow manure. So just imagine the stench in the air. Um, he even cut his beard in strange ways and, um, he even dispensed those hairs, um, in ways that folks will say, wait a minute, this is just getting stranger and stranger by the minute. Okay. So with all this stuff that he was doing though, he had to send that message out. Of course it looked weird, but he had to send that message out because God was putting him up to letting him know or letting the, the, um, that area know what was ahead. Okay. And I'm sorry, but some people you just can't reach sitting down and just having a conversation with them. (laughs) You just can't. I've tried that, especially with, um, some folks that's closest to me and they don't quite get sometimes a conversation. So then I have to make things visual for them. Okay. And then it's like, oh, okay. So some of you all, you may not be in the kind of practice or organization or council um, where it's about talking so much, but more about visual displays. Okay. They may seem strange to a lot of folks, but if it's going to get through to someone who has a personality disorder, then do what you're supposed to do. And maybe, maybe just maybe, there were some things going on in those different communities where Ezekiel lived and Jeremiah and um, Jonah and so forth, where the people were not able to receive in the way that um, they uh, could have through just simple communication. Okay. Now I'm going to read uh, something from Catholic exchange.com in the scriptures. Uh, They are explained as symbolic acts referring to what Ezekiel and Jeremiah and all of these different uh, prophets did. They are explained as symbolic acts that convey divine messages along with their words. For example, the stripping of Isaiah symbolized the future humiliation of Egypt and Ethiopia at the hands of Assyrian conquerors. Jeremiah's yoke signified the servitude of the Jews to Babylonia, while Ezekiel's dung warm meals foreshadowed their exile, where they would be forced to eat unclean food. So you see how that works? Okay. Now, some of you all might say, okay, well, how might this work if I got somebody in front of me who many people have complained about and they have these strange ways of conveying God's messages? Then what? Well, I would say let them be. But what if it's the kind of thing that's going to get somebody killed or it's going to end up putting somebody in jail or what have you? Well, those sorts of things, you definitely are going to have to um, warn the person of those consequences. And if they insist that God is telling them or what have you, um, and you can't seem to come up with any connection as to why they would be doing these things, then yeah, we would have to say say it, that it is some type of satanic operation going on, whether it's within that person or around them. There's no rhyme or reason for why this person is doing what they're doing. It's not uplifting. It's not encouraging. It's not um, sending a warning to folks in the area um, that there's trouble ahead. They're just acting like a complete fool. Well, We don't look at those sorts of things as divine messages from the one true God. Okay. So that is one aspect to look at how people are falsely accused of being crazy when in fact they're not. Okay. They do some bizarre things, but that's part of their ministry. Okay. Um, but, but 
there are those who it's not ministry related work. It's no divine messages involved. Okay. Um, it's not about consequences of sin either. It's just that some people are going through much. Okay. There's, I mean, we don't know what the explanation explanation is. It's just that they're going through so much. Okay. Um, they may have seen many, many people and said that they didn't get any help. Um, they may have, uh, experienced some things in their bodies as a result of, like in my case, it was childbirth, right? So I was already going through my share of issues during a period of time where I was not doing everything I was supposed to do, but then I confessed and I repented, got back on track with the Lord, but yet, okay, here comes another trial. Here comes another issue. Okay. But I'm not in sin though. But why? It's just how it is at times. Man wants to find some meaning, some reason. Sometimes there is none. Okay. So some of you all need to take that deep breath. Oh, thank you. I needed some validation because the books and people's experiences and all of this stuff is not going to always give us the answers that we need. That's why we've got to trust in the Lord. And if he wanted us to know all the answers, then guess what? There's no reason to trust in him, right? Some of you all, the reason why God's not giving you any answers to what people's conditions are, including yourself, is because he wants you to stay. Come on, leaning on him and not on your own understanding. Some of you all are a little bit too cocky and confident and want answers to everything. And the Lord says, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. Lord, why did you give me this woman? The married man says, this woman is this and she's that. But is she beating you? No. Is she lying? No. Is she acting like a complete fool? No. Is she out there uh, cheating on you? No. But she's just got a weird way about herself. And it just bothers me. Ugh, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, that woman could be the very reason why that man is staying close to the Lord and he just doesn't realize it. She could be an integral part to his life, but he doesn't appreciate nor does he understand. OK, I use that as an example because some people I just feel in my spirit that they're coming across my audios and they got a lot of relationship stuff going on with them, even though they're helping other people. But you got a lot of relationship stuff going on. OK. <laughs> Going back to Matthew 7, 1 through 29, don't be given any relationship counsel if you don't quite have an understanding as to what's going on in your relationship. And that was something that the Lord spoke to me about once again, some years back. You don't quite understand why your relationship is acting in the way that it's acting. Let me give you some insight. And then I found out that it's not it wasn't acting in the way that it was supposed to because he didn't have an understanding as to what postpartum depression uh, was as it related to me, not just general definitions on the Internet. And I didn't quite understand um, what was going on with him after he lost his mother. OK, so the relationship is under trials. OK, it's under significant trials when one doesn't understand the other and the other doesn't understand um, the one who's pointing the finger. OK, so there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So if I've got these things behind closed doors and then I'm going out here and I'm trying to counsel somebody, let's say in the Christian uh, organization, OK, Christian uh, program, seminar, whatever, um, the counseling's not going to go over too well because people can hear tension. People can hear uh, when a person doesn't know what they're talking about, people can hear when someone isn't happy. OK, they can hear all of that. And in my audios that deal with uh, domestic abuse, um, I am very unhappy because I know that there are so many people that are still going through that. And I had went through that myself, um, but I got free of it. And so. If you are one who's in a violent relationship, but you're a hypocrite, you're pretending as if your relationship is OK and all right. When meanwhile, just the other day, he smacked you upside the head. OK, I'm just using an example. I'm not saying you like you who's listening, but it's going to be hard to try to preach deliverance to someone when there is 
some stuff going on at home with that one who claims to be a relationship counselor. So this is why some leader leaders, they've just, they're not very good. Okay. Um, we're going to pick up on this uh, message in another audio. Okay. This one is already um, becoming long enough and we're going to get into the scriptures on insanity. Okay. In general, what is it? How does it look in the Bible from a spiritual sense? We're going to take a look. All right. So please do listen to the next audio. Thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. And if you haven't given, we do welcome donations. To God be the glory.